middleweight champion Chris Pyatt of Leicester met the Californian Russell Mitchell. Pyatt was to have fought Carlos Santos, but he pulled out because of visa trouble. Mitchell was matched with Gary Stretch on the same bill, but Stretch is injured, so they changed partners, and now it's Pyatt Mitchell as Pyatt continues his storming comeback with a world title shot in sight. Well, at the ringside, Jim Watt and Reg Guttridge, and in charge, inside the ropes, referee Larry O'Connell. So there it is then, Larry O'Connell just giving the, the final instructions for the scheduled 10. So the Californian Russell Mitchell, uh, the man who brought the downfall of uh, Tony Collins at Swansea, a big surprise, but a big step up in class nonetheless with the former champion, Pyatt. But very awkward Southpaw indeed now. Pyatt now got back into the top 10 ratings. They keep messing him about, although he keeps winning. They get, he goes up and down the ratings, but he's currently number 10. And has been looking very impressive in uh, what we would term a comeback, really, after time out of the ring. With good single punch stuff. And I was convinced that... Uh, he had a very good chance with Robert Bam Bam Hines for a version of the World Championship, but Hines has now lost that title, somewhat surprisingly, with Darren Van Horn, nicknamed the schoolboy. So now we'll see how much danger this Californian champion has. He's 32 years old. I'd like to see Pyatt under a bit of test now, uh, Jim, because we've been pretty impressed with him, but we've got to judge the opposition all the time in these recent contests. Yeah, well, I think uh, Mitchell has already heard of a Pyatt's reputation. He's been very cagey in the first round here, keeping plenty of space between himself and Pyatt. He's got good concentration, an awkward uh, but sharp southpaw jab, which uh, is annoying Pyatt at this moment rather than giving him problems. But uh, Mitchell looks as though he can keep his chin out of danger for a, a few rounds. Originally, of course, uh, Russell Mitchell was down to box the, the reigning champion, Gary Stretch. He's at uh, ringside here, but he had to pull out with a hand injury. And they switched uh, to Pyatt, who was scheduled to fight Carlos Santos, a former champion, who had uh, visa problems apparently getting here. got himself into shape now uh, joining the Frank Warren camp and getting Ken Squires up in Leicester to really put him through some hard paces and uh, I, I, I really think he justifies the top 10 Jim do you? Yeah he's definitely a world class fighter uh, Mitchell uh, is a little bit awkward here in the first round uh, as I see annoying him with the punches but you can see the class Pyatt has So there's a rundown of Back file, as it were, for Chris Pard. He's, uh, he's got a bit of weight advantage. 11 stone 2 against 10 stone 13 here. And uh, gave up those championships. I mean, he's, he really is a good record that he's got, this fellow. And he surprisingly lost to uh, Gianfranco Rossi, who went on to win a world championship, which he's since lost. Russell Mitchell tucked away there somewhere behind the comes from Bakersfield in uh, California. He's said to be the state champion. So manager Pat Murphy calls his man the magic man. They love to give him the, the nicknames. And we're into the second round then. And just towards the end of the first there, that Chris Park just gave the American a taster of a good right hand punch. It's an awkward man to fight, isn't he, Jim, with the, 
with the style and the way he backs off and pecks away like that. Yeah, and the, the south post stance obviously adds to that. He uh, doesn't look robust enough to take Pyatt's punches. Uh, Pyatt's just having problems getting into punching range. He spent the first round just trying to find ways of getting close without taking that little nagging jab in the face. But uh, it looks as though once he gets close that, that Mitchell's going to struggle to, to handle the, the power in his punches. doubles up the punches fairly well of Pyatt. Notice that he'll, he'll put them in in little combinations like that, fast. But he can't afford to hang his chin out there. At least uh, Tony Collins certainly couldn't, but he's since made a comeback with a winning fight. See, he started to find the answer now to the south four stance using that right hand. There it is there. size down on him isn't it? The exits are going now. Yeah well I think he's realised it's pointless throwing single punches which is a little bit too elusive for that if he puts, puts punches together maybe the last of a, a burst of three punches is going to land. Mitchell certainly not the style of opponent to make anybody look terribly good, Jim. He's, he's what they call a bit of a messer in the fight game, isn't he? Makes it difficult for you. Yeah, well, Pyatt just has to make sure to keep cool. As he's doing it, he's raising the pace, but he's not doing it in an erratic fashion. He, he's still uh, in control of his movements there. Uh, Mitchell certainly can frustrate a man, but uh, Pyatt's experienced enough to keep it nice and cool, calm. And uh, here's the powerful punches coming now. He should be a grade above this class anyway, the former British champion. To shoot the uppercut there right between the guard and uh, Mitchell saying hello this fella's a bit classy and he and he hurts a bit I would think <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's gonna be one-way stuff now unless he can do something a bit spectacular Mitchell as he did with Collins to be fair but I doubt that he can do it here He really staggered back into that corner there, I tell you that. And he's, he's looked as though he's got a little cut on the head. And while we're doing that, a quick word from Jim Rosenthal with Gary Stretz, the champion. Well, Gary, an impressive performance uh, so far from Chris. Can you see this going much longer, this fight? No, it's going more and more into Chris's fight. Uh, the first round, the American looked a little bit tricky, but looking at the second round, Chris has started to find his distance and his range. And, uh, I would hopefully, I would imagine it's all going to be over this round. The punching power is a very big difference here, isn't it, between the two? Yeah, they look like two different weights to me. I mean, Chris looks uh, far superior in, in, inside and he's moving the American round like he's a little boy. Uh, I think this round will tell. If, if the American allows Chris to keep on top of him and uh, gets involved in any kind of fight, I think he's going to find himself come on stuff. I think he's got a cut as well, the American, uh, just over the left eye. That won't help him either. I haven't noticed, but uh, I don't think that'll help me either, will it? So into round three, and right at the end of the round there, uh, Russell Mitchell was cut. But as Gary Stretch was saying, and uh, Jim White, I certainly agree with that, this little measure of class in uh, this game makes such a difference. Tag with a few punches part that probably you wouldn't with an orthodox fighter, Jim, or not. What do you think? Yeah, well, Mitchell is sharp, and the, the southpaw jab has certainly given Pyatt some problems. But if it was a powerful jab, then I think Pyatt would pay a bit more respect to it. The, the, the jab is just uh, more of a prod. It's not troubling Pyatt, so he's just deciding to come through those punches and land his own. But the pressure at the end of the second round seemed to be getting to Mitchell. He 
he's out strengthening him uh, as Gary Stretch said he looks like a different weight really uh, he tried to claim a low blow there it was a bit low and uh, see the referee now will say don't don't take up the count he's saying to the timekeeper I'll get this fellow up and give him a little talking to and then this is what they call wasting a bit of time now while well, he'll drag Mitchell off the floor he won't let him get away with that it's unlike American fighters really they're wearing the obligatory foul proof protectors and uh, obviously he's saying I'll give you some time but don't overdo it well if he refuses to get up Jim we, we've got a bit of a problem but no he's saying uh, thanks for the rest and we'll find out whether that punch was south of the border or not and have a look at that later well that one wasn't was it it was bang on the button I remember rightly too uh, Mitchell had a bit of a moan when he fought Collins he complaining that he was caught with a low punch and made a meal of it Uh, the referee would take a bit of time off while he was uh, talking there with the three minute round he'll add that or the timekeeper will it's getting to be one way traffic now and he's he's looking to as though nobody knows the troubles he's seen at the moment doesn't he Mitchell yeah well, well Pai is still having a little bit of trouble getting through cleanly to Mitchell's chin Mitchell he's very slick inside he just pulls his chin away at the, the last split second but he has nothing to discourage Pyatt with and it's just a case of how long can he last now he doesn't have the power to stop Pyatt in his tracks and uh, is beginning to become a little bit one-sided so if we're going to take uh, any claims of Pyatt seriously now he's, he's really got to do a good finishing job on this fellow we reckon about half a minute to go if we add a little bit for the stoppage as it were in that round a little rest Well, Jim, let's have a look at that low punch, can we? Yeah, well, it certainly Make did your eyes seem, water or not, this one. It certainly did seem low. Uh, I think the American had a, a fair enough claim. Found it come right hand, bang, yep, it was, it was well low, bang centre. Round four. And we're into round four, scheduled ten, then, at the light middleweight. That's uh, the 11 stone division. 11-2, part 10-13, Mitchell. Just shoves a bit with his shoulder there, Bart, doesn't he, Jim? Yeah, that was one of the old pro tricks, yeah. The referee, thankfully, didn't waste too much time uh, complaining about it. Paya has wasted uh, quite a few more punches than we expect to see. Mitchell has been a difficult opponent to tag. But uh, maybe starting to get through now, but still having to take that little jab as he comes in. Before both fights here with Collins and now Pyatt, he's, he's been a very confident character backstage, to say the least, Mitchell. I've come here to win, he keeps saying, and struts around and likes it. can't afford to labour at all now, he's got to do it in style, hasn't he, Pyatt? So I think he's now trying to pick his punches, as I said earlier, he, he's throwing the punches a little bit reckless in the first couple of rounds, but now he's slowing the pace down, trying to pick punches, he's still putting the power into the punches, but trying to place them more carefully. Trouble is, Jim, when he does throw a little salvo of blows there, he sort of stops and doesn't back off and doesn't protect himself hard, he's got to watch that when he moves up got a Frenchman now holding the WBC championship, one of the big upset defeated Don Curry recently and the schoolboy Darren Van Horn of the WBA and Julian Jackson IBF, so these are the people that uh, Hart will be looking for
pulls a few faces, Mitchell, Jim, doesn't he? It's... Yeah, I think he was complaining about the Pike shoulder again. The Pike did use a lot of that shoulder again. He's roughing him up, but uh, I think Mitchell's a frustrating opponent. I think uh, he's liable to do that with quite a few opponents. his credit is hung in there longer than I thought because it, it looked all over really at the end of the third round and we're coming up the countdown for the fourth so the referee wants to have another look at the eye there it, uh, over the left eye and uh, Pat Murphy's going to side now it looks as though just at the end of the round he stopped it well I suppose in a way I think Pat might be just a little disappointed there that he didn't get the clear cut finish that he wanted a win's a win, as they say, Jim. It's not quite the way Pyatt wanted it, I don't think. Yeah, well, Mitchell was still giving him some problems. Obviously, it was Pyatt's fight. He was having it his own way, but I always found it difficult to get through to Mitchell's chin. But uh, when all said and done, a win is a win. Now, gentlemen, please, after two minutes, 59 seconds of round four, ladies and gentlemen, Mitchell has sustained a cut over the left eye. The referee has stopped the contest. Pyatt is the winner. So just a second to go then for the end of that round. Who knows, these seconds might have been able to get some coagulates on it to go at least another round or so, but uh, he was always the boss nonetheless, Sir uh, Pyatt. And uh, back on the road now into that uh, world top 10, but still with plenty to do. Well done, Chris. Another swift victory for you. How satisfied with your way of, with your performance tonight? Um, it's a bit of an anti-climax, really. I was looking forward to fighting Carlos Santos. Um, I found out this morning he pulled out, and it took a little bit of the sparkle away. Uh, but um, so the fight wasn't really as important. I had to sort of pick myself up off the floor to get a bit motivated. But uh, the fight's gone okay in the end. So uh, I got a couple of more rounds under my belt. So I'm mm -hmm. satisfied. He was never in any danger of hurting you, was he? But he was a southpaw and a bit tricky at times. Yeah, he's um, a southpaw. Um, I have problems with southpaws. Um, I found him a bit awkward to begin with, especially in the first half. But I was sort of basically just trying to wear him down, you know? Mm. The, the damage over the eye, of course, uh, caused the fight to be, to be called off. Um, were you surprised when that end came? I mean, you could have finished it yourself, it seemed to me. Yeah, it's always a shame when the fight gets stopped with a good tie, you know, because... Uh, you like to win fairly and properly, uh, and it's not really fair when the fight gets stopped on a good eye, but uh, that's boxing for you. It's not up to you if you get a world title shot or not, but do you feel you're in shape for it in the spring? Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, like I said, I had to really pick myself up off the floor for this fight because I was looking forward to fighting Carlos Santos, who's a lot sort of higher in the ratings, and uh, to sort of find out on the morning of the fight that you've had a switch of opponent, uh, you know, it's a bit disappointing. How would you compare yourself now to when you were the European champion, what, a couple of years ago? Um, I think I'm a lot more compact uh, fight altogether. Um, I think I'm punching harder. I think I'm being trained a lot better um, in my fitness and everything. So uh, I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident. Let's just bring in uh, your trainer here, Ken Squires, who's uh, got such a lot to do with the shape you're in. Ken, just one question for you. Can he be world champion? Yeah, Chris Pye is made to be light middleweight champion of the world. He's got all the credentials, he's got speed, skill, stamina, you name it, Chris Pike's got it. Okay, and one question for Frank Warren. You're trying to get a world title fight together, I know. Just give us the very latest on that, could you? We should know by the weekend where we are with Darren Van Horn's people. They, we've made them an offer and we're hoping they'll accept it. So it's just a couple of days' time, but by the smile on your face, you, you look quietly confident it's gonna come off. Well, for the money I've offered them, I hope that, I'm, oh, if I was them, I'd take it. And is that going to be in this country? Of course, in Leicester. That's where we'll be. Good. Another good win, and let's look forward to you getting the world title shot. Thanks, Jensel. Thank you, Jim. Yes, indeed.